It starts with a problem. A major storm impacts a community. A blizzard. It's chaos. The wildfires that rage California every year. There's flames everywhere. There is smoke everywhere. Cars stranded on the road. Power lines down. There's lots of lightning. Heavy winds. Transformers blow. Power goes down. Like every problem, a snowstorm impacts people. The kids who are trying to get home safely from school, the people who need their treatment for cancer or dialysis. People not knowing exactly what's gonna happen the next day. How do we respond to that? How do we rescue people? How do we recover? This is where industrial engineering can come in. So what people don't understand is that these very, very challenging problems can be solved using mathematics. People ask me and other engineers like myself to help come up with those solutions. Industrial engineering tries to tackle the problem at, at its core, understand how we can prevent the same issues from happening again, but most importantly, understanding how it impacts people's lives. And ironically, the way we solve a problem that is so deeply personal it's very mathematical. We can take very technical approaches to solve problems that really affect people in the most meaningful ways. Excuse me. Hey, I've, we're asking a few people on the street some questions about applied mathematics. Applied mathematics. He's not in IOE, does it matter? He's backing in there now. Good, have a what? seat. What is that? Could I be looking at the camera or? Excuse me. Do you guys know anything about applied mathematics? <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Hey, there's a little prize afterwards, too. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, cool. What is that prize? Well, you'll be surprised. Arkin, right? Arkin. Arkin. Yep. Arkin. What is applied mathematics? What is applied mathematics? What's a problem that you have, right? Like, tell me what your problem is, and I can come back to you with some math that describes your problem and helps you solve your problem. Companies have different sort of problems and they actually need some engineers to uh, solve this problem. Understanding how something works and then making it better. Pretty much anything you're interested in, there are ways that you can make that better, faster, more accessible with industrial engineering. If we're looking at pharmaceutical drugs, which is what a lot of my research focuses on, we look at how can we stock drugs so that we don't have shortages, that we have the drug when we need it, but we also don't want to stock too much that we're discarding all of this drug and have waste. It's a phenomenal time to be working in the space of data science. There's a huge need for people with skills in applied math. The students that I've worked with, they're working everywhere from nonprofits to being professors to working for auto companies, Apple. So you could go work for those big companies like Amazon or Facebook. You could also go and work for airlines like American and Delta. You could go do consulting if you enjoy traveling around the world, getting to see new places. You can also apply it to Major League Baseball. You can apply it to scheduling concert tours. These expertise are needed today and are gonna be even more needed in the future. Applied mathematics is a, a big set of tools, right? You can use it to help solve problems from healthcare to logistics to, you know, trucking. So the world is made up of systems. These systems are connected entities that work together. Virtually everything is a system, whether it's people, activity, places, machines. It's about how different things interact with each other. And of course, systems can be at the microscopic level or the macroscopic level. The small system might be your microwave. It's a bunch of components and parts that work together to meet a task. An example of a medium-sized system could be anything from your car to a small power grid. A hospital or an airline. It's really important that those parts aren't just like the hardware and the technical part. It includes the people, the managers, the system users, the system operators. So it's very much about the people. All of these things interconnect. 
So my flight from Detroit to Boston may be late because there are thunderstorms in San Diego. And so my pilot for Detroit to Boston is sitting in a ground hold in San Diego. A city is a system of systems, if you will, is a term that's often used, that it's a, a collection of different systems that also interact with each other. You've got the water system, the transportation system, the power system, the food system, the building system, and they all interact. And the bad news is that that means that there's frailty and there's opportunity for things to go wrong, that when one thing goes wrong, it can make all sorts of other things go wrong as well. The flip side is that that's opportunity. Problems call for solutions, and that's where people ask me and other engineers like myself to help come up with those solutions. So what we do is we observe a system, we collect data, we try and understand as much as possible, and then we try and build a model. If you're building a house, you start off with an architect, and the architect makes a model. It might be a sketch, it might be wood or clay, Industrial engineers build models of a very different sort, but we build mathematical representations of the world. This model is oftentimes very complicated. It is a model that we can't explicitly write down by hand, but it's something that we can store or use and put in a computer. The cool thing about models is that once we have one, now we can start to use that model to improve the system. Then is when our jobs become very interesting because now you can start to make predictions and say, well, okay, if I tweak this parameter, if I make this change to my system, how's it gonna affect people's lives? People, when they think of math, they always think people are genius and they can do the Rubik's Cube. Is this true or not? It's not true. I cannot solve a Rubik's Cube, but if you give me two more, I can juggle them. <laughs> Let me tell you that. This is the first time that I wanna play with this. Yes, I did Rubik's Cubes as a kid. <laughs> I wasn't that into them. <laughs> Maybe I can finish two or three quarters. Once someone solved it, like, why should I go through the effort, right? Oh, God, I hate Rubik's Cubes. It's all by myself, and, and I don't like working all by myself. I like working with people. I got a, my first Rubik's Cube when I was about four years old. I, could, of course, couldn't solve it. But what I did do was I realized that you could take off the stickers. So I took off the stickers and put them back in order. And this is exactly what we do in industrial engineering. Find creative solutions to solving real world problems. In my opinion, industrial engineers are a very diverse group of people because of their backgrounds, because of their expertise, because of their domain knowledge, but they do have some commonalities. So one thing about an industrial engineer is that we will constantly be looking for efficiencies. Most industrial engineers have really strong ideas about how you do things. For example, when I go to the airport and I see the TSA security lines, it almost always bugs me because it could be done so much more efficiently. Almost every action that I, that I take, I'm trying to optimize it. As a person who is a problem solver, can you optimize that? <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> you think that you can make every coffee shop in the planet better. When I'm tying my shoelaces in the morning, when I'm trying to figure out what time is the best time for me to leave my apartment for the elevator. There's a way that you grocery shop. If they go to a restaurant, they want to always combine the best possible food that give you the lowest price and the best taste. Um, and of course, traffic, traffic is a big problem. One of the amazing things right now is the amount of data and information that we have about what's going on in the world. Every click of a mouse on your computer, every car passing through a traffic light. The amount of data that we have is increasing daily at terabyte scales. But what does that really mean? It means we have lots of information that we can use to inform these models, to test these models, to develop these models data-driven decisions, artificial intelligence, data science are actually tools that come out of industrial engineering. And with bigger and faster and more powerful computers, problems that even five, 10 years ago, we never would have even bothered trying to solve, we can now solve quickly and effectively. We can tackle some really hard societal problems. In my own research, we look at community resilience, equity in communities, power outage forecasting, and so there's definitely lots of opportunities to make real world impact with this field. A lot of researchers are working right now in human trafficking, trying to solve many things that society will benefit a lot. These notions of fairness, diversity, and equity 
have become more and more important. Industrial engineers are changing the world. We are making the world better by tackling these big problems and really digging in and understanding that system as an integrated whole. This is fulfilling for me because you actually make some impact. And the interesting thing is that you can see the immediate effect of it. We're solving real world problems that will promote some of the things that make the world a better place. There's this stereotype about mathematicians as being very cerebral and very antisocial. And, you know, for me, one of the reasons that I got into industrial engineering was about people. That was one of the key differentiators of this field as opposed to others. It's about people, right? It's about understanding their problems in a very deep way. Yes, we do have maybe like our geeky side to us um, and being more passionate about math, but we're still people that love to do real, real things out in the world. But to be honest, I, I love to code, but I actually wanted to code something that uh, directly solved the problem. And a lot of industrial engineers work alongside domain experts. We can't know everything. So when I'm working on a problem in emergency medicine, I love talking with the ER docs and understanding what they're doing and how they care for patients. But it's also really important to talk to people who work on the inpatient side, to talk to people who work in the labs where these tests get done, to talk to the people who clean the rooms before the next patient can come in. That is really get in and understand that system, not just the technical components of it, yes that, but also the people, the interactions of the people with the system, and how we can start to improve those situations so that people can better achieve their potential. On the one hand, I think about problems in this really wonky mathematical way, and at the same time, I can't do my job if I can't connect with people who don't think in that mathy kind of wonky way. Left brain, right brain, right? You need, you need both the empathy and the analytical side of your mind, and then you're not done. You're gonna go back and forth between empathy and analytics over and over again until you found something that actually meets people's needs. I don't want people to think that you have to be the world's best mathematician to be able to make an impact with math. I was not one of these people that was a whiz that could do times tables till 128. I didn't need to be an expert on the first day. All I needed to do is be persistent. We're not just a bunch of math geeks that like playing video games. Some of us are. I was one of those kids who loved math from day one, but I didn't want to do math by myself. If you're a student that's very passionate about mathematics, very passionate about computation, and want to make an impact in the real world, industrial engineering is the perfect place for you. Why wouldn't you be excited about this field, right? It, it has the opportunity to fundamentally change the way that we're doing pretty much everything. It's a very flexible uh, major, and it's a very broad major. You can go to work to any industry, or to government, or to even save the world with us. I could never work in healthcare as like a nurse or a surgeon or anything like that, but industrial and operations engineering really allows me to make contributions to the healthcare field without having to actually be in the OR or the hospital setting. These two separate things of loving math and puzzles and problem solving and caring about the world and people and making a difference were not two different things. So if you are interested in math and science, if you are interested in making a difference in the world, then industrial engineering is definitely something you need to check out because we make a difference and we use that, those math skills to do it. So are we done? Yeah. Uh, I remember that you said something about the prize or so. Okay, here it is. <gasps> Ah, donuts. Oh my god, that looks amazing. If, if you were to say something mathematical about these, what would you say? One of the reasons I picked it is because it was the closest one to, to me, so it's the optimal choice in terms of energy expended. So why did I pick the one with nuts? Because this maximizes my satisfaction with the donut. Do you think there's any way we could improve these donuts? Um, I think you could replace them with bagels. <laughs> <laughs> it's a donut, right? Like how? How can you get better than fried dough, right? Like <laughs> The amount of the sprinkles are not the optimal, and we'll make it a little bit better. <laughs> well, we can make it bigger a little bit. That would be good. Change the side of the box a little bit so I can like put more donuts in that. Great idea. You see? <laughs> Things that are very similar, I would put them further apart. Um, 
really depends on how you want to cluster the information. And I'm assuming this is Boston cream, and I'm realizing it's possible I'm going to bite into it, and there won't be any Boston cream. I, I think you could have helped me to guarantee that my choice was the best choice if you had provided a little bit more information. We need to maximize the number of sprinkles. And maybe a bit more frosting. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, yeah, I think he took all the donuts. I think he found a way to improve those. <laughs>